be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Those are the words of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah is writing to give words of warmth and comfort to the nation of Israel. Now, Israel had it rough. I mean, every time they turn around, they're faced with oppression and slavery, and typically it's due to their disobedience. But in this passage of Isaiah, he's writing to bring them back to the promises that God had made them. He's reminding them that he is your God, and we have his presence. Like his presence is here with us. And over these next few moments, I just want to unpack these five prepositions so that you and I can see even more clearly the depth of God's promise to be present with us. He says in this passage, I am your God. That means God is over you. God's presence with you includes his presence over you as God. See in Isaiah 40, 26, God sets this precedence that there's no one who compares to him. He asks, to whom can you compare me to? Who is my equal? And it appears as if this is a question, but actually what God is doing is making a statement. He's saying that he is beyond equal. After implying that nothing compares to him, God draws this limited association, this star-filled sky. He says, look up into the heavens. Who created all of these stars? He brings them out like an army one after another, calling each of these stars by its name. Because of his great power, his incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. That's Isaiah 40, 26. According to experts, there are at least 70 six trillion stars in the universe. This number represents a seven with 22 zeros after it, which that isn't very helpful to somebody like me who did not do very well in math class. But to put that number in perspective, that's 10 times the grain of sand on all of the world's beaches and deserts. That's a lot of stars. But God remembers each one and calls them out by name. In the ancient world, to know the name of something was to know its essence. It was like having power over it. Calling the stars by name just reinforces that God is all-knowing and he's also all-powerful He's sovereign over this deep space, the stars, the galaxies, the moons, the planets, the asteroids, and these cosmic rays. And sometimes, you and I, we just need to walk outside and look up. The stars, they, they, they reveal God. They, it shows off His vastness, and it provides a scale of smallness for us to realize who He is. The other thing that it says in this verse is that He says, I am with you. See, God is not just over you, God is by you. And God is not only present over you as a sovereign ruler, but he's also present by your side to calm your fear. Jesus gives no less than 125 command statements in the Gospels. But the one command that he issues the most, actually 21 times, it deals with, with fear. These statements that Jesus makes are like, do not be afraid or fear not, or have courage and take heart. To put that in perspective, the command to love God and your neighbor only appears eight times. You see, he didn't issue the command to not be afraid because there's not anything to be afraid of. He's well aware that there's plenty to fear. But he's reminding us that we can rely on his presence to face the fears. In Psalm 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all of the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So even in the darkest of shadows, David knew that God literally tracked him down. No matter what he came up against, he knew that he could dwell with God forever. So God was the great one over him and beside him. This verse also tells us that I will strengthen you. This is God in you. God is also in you through his spirit. So Paul prayed that you would understand God's incomparable great power for us who believe. That same power, the, the same as the mighty strength that he, he exerted when he raised Jesus from the dead and seated him in his right hand in the heavenly realms. This is what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1. 
You know, four words are used here to describe this force of God for your good. The first word is power, a term from which we get the word dynamite. God's explosive power. And the next he writes is is exertion and then might, referring to God's mighty strength. All four words, power, exertion, might, and strength, all refer to God's work in you. Paul doesn't pray that you'll get this power. He prays that you'll realize that you already have this power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and me. And this power, it doesn't make you superhuman, but it does give you the ability to push through these incredible odds. So God in you means these struggles that you, you, don't, you don't have to define you. The struggles don't define you. These struggles deepen your dependency on God. The other thing he says is, I'm going to help you. God is around you. God watches our back. He's a 360 degree God. I mean, King David said, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. That's Psalm 139. The challenge with our faith is that it can't always be planned, can it? I mean, nothing that we're dealing with right now has been planned. But things are always popping up. Changes are always altering our plans. But it's okay when your plans get derailed because God works ahead of you. God is working ahead in our lives. So having faith, that means that sometimes following God, even when we don't know where we're going. I mean, I understand. I am learning that uncertainty is how God teaches you to live in the certainty of faith. We have to step out in faith with his promises and understanding that these promises are the stepping stones because God is all around us. And now the fifth thing that he says is, I'm going to hold you up. God is underneath you. When you can't go along in your own strength, God carries you along in his. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says, The eternal God is your refuge and his everlasting arms are under you. The most powerful way to see God's presence is to always look back. No matter how far along that you've, you've been, you, you can look back and see how far God has brought you. There have been times where I couldn't see God working, but that didn't mean that he wasn't working. When I look back, I know that I can see all along what God was doing. You see, God promises us his presence. His promise is his presence. His presence is the promise that fills you and me with wonder and peace. He's always watching over you to bless and to protect. And he's gone to crazy lengths to ensure that your relationship with him and proven his love in the most dramatic fashion, he's guaranteed that nothing in all of the universe can separate us from him. That's good news today. So why is this important for us right now? Because it's going to be really easy for us to get so wrapped up in things that are happening around us in society today and things that we hear on the media that we can easily overlook God's presence. And we don't want to, we don't want to be that kind of followers, that we, we walk in fear, but we walk in faith. So we want to do what the Bible says and the presence of God and acknowledging the presence of God and depending on the presence of God. We have to know that God is with us. If not, we will just go through the motions in a couple of months or years or whenever we'll want to jump ship to something more shinier and more new. And we have to see God's presence at work here among us. So I challenge you today to recognize that God is over and under and beside and in, and he's actively moving in our world today. And he's moving through you. And so as we process this verse and hear the words of Isaiah, understand he's writing to an audience that struggled. But these same words that held so true many years ago are the same words that hold true for us today.